Thank you, Madam Speaker. Good morning, Madam Speaker. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad to have the opportunity to discuss this amendment this morning in the light of day, albeit the somewhat hazy light of day, instead of in the middle of the night, only hours after receiving this amendment and without the opportunity to think it through, discuss it with my colleagues. But so I, I do thank you for adjourning last night and giving me the opportunity to now, after being getting some sleep, stand up before you and ask you to reject Amendment H1321 because it is, in my opinion, an opportunistic power grab that does not belong in a budget bill. And I think we've all determined that, that it is not germane to this bill, although y'all just agreed to pretend it's germane. The commission is made up of 17 members. Our Supreme Court's most senior justice, eight political appointees appointed by our governor, who, by the way, are all Republicans, and eight Iowa attorneys, two from each congressional district, who, two of whom actually are Republicans, who are elected by other Iowa attorneys from their own respective congressional, congressional districts. When a judicial vacancy arises on our state Supreme Court, the 17 members of the commission work together to investigate and interview the applications submitted by attorneys from all over the state. And by the way, those applications and those interviews are available on the Iowa Supreme Court judicial website for anyone to watch and review. And after many hours of deliberation, the commission selects the three most qualified attorneys to send up to the governor. The governor then appoints whichever one of these three nominees she prefers to fill the Supreme Court vacancy. It's very much a team effort. The governor's eight Republican political appointees ensure that the three attorneys nominated by the commission share, at least in some part, the governor's general philosophy and values, while the eight elected attorney members ensure that all three of the chosen nominees have the necessary expertise, experience, and judicial temperament to do the job. And again, the governor, not the commission members, and certainly not the eight elected attorney members, has the final say. It's a good system. It's a respected system. It's a system that was devised by this body 40 years ago, and it's a system that works. I challenge anyone in this room to find fault with either of the two Supreme Court justices appointed by Governor Reynolds since she took office, or to suggest that either of those justices don't share her judicial philosophy. And although those justices, as well as the two justices appointed by Governor Branstad in 2011, most likely don't share my own judicial philosophy, that's okay, because I know that all four of these justices are excellent and conscientious jurists who are dedicated to the rule of law. And I know that because all four of these justices, like every other justice sitting on our Supreme Court, were thoroughly vetted by our nonpartisan merit-based state judicial nominating commission. As Representative Holt says, this amendment changes our current makeup of our state judicial nominated position by giving the governor one more political appointee. That's all it does, right? No big deal. Except it is a big deal what it effectively does is exactly the same thing that the bill that Representative Holt filed and that ran through judiciary back in February attempted to do, and that is to ensure that the governor's appointees, that political appointees, have control over the judicial nominating selection process. That is the effective outcome of this amendment. Instead of eight political appointees, eight elected attorneys, we will have nine political appointees. 
and eight elected attorneys. Now, I am not suggesting that the governor's political appointees are going to be taking orders from the governor's office or won't do a conscientious job at vetting the people before them, but the point is, it looks real bad, right? If that's not the point of this, if the point of this amendment isn't to make sure that the governor has the final say, or at least people appointed by the governor have the final say on which judges get sent to the governor, then what is the point of this amendment? That's just what it does. It destroys the current balance of power to the extent that there is a balance of power. It destroys it in favor of the majority power. That is a power play. It's a power grab, and it's not something that we should be doing at all in this chamber, and it's certainly not something that we should be doing in a budget bill. It's an opportunistic acquisition of control over the commission, and I was so proud of the members of this body that rejected that attempt earlier this session, rejected House Study Bill 110, refused to vote for it, which is why I assume it has been languishing on the white calendar ever since. And make no mistake, this amendment is no different than that bill. It its intent is the same, its effect is the same. And I would ask those of you who refuse to vote yes on that attempted power grab to vote no on this amendment today by voting to put partisan appointees in charge of that process. Appearances are important, everyone. It sends a bad message to the country about our priorities and our values. The rules are in place. The rules have worked well for 40 years. Vote no on this opportunist attempt to change those rules in favor of the party in control. Thank you.